Nate, thank you for being with us. Um, our goal here today is to learn a little bit about what the foundation is all about and their role as we move forward with agriculture in South Dakota. The foundation is an endowed fund within the South Dakota Community Foundation. So explain to us what the program is all about and its mission. Yeah, so uh, interestingly, the, the South Dakota Ag Foundation started when uh, Lucas Lynch was our Secretary of Agriculture. Yeah. And he found some old laws on our books that said, way back in the 70s, the state legislature authorized the Department of Ag to form a foundation for the benefit of agriculture, but nothing had ever been done with it. So we, he gathered a group of, of ag leaders and we, we talked about, is this something that makes sense for us to put together? And what came of that discussion was, uh, yes, a foundation to build resources for the long run for, the, for our number one industry, agriculture, mm -hmm. was worth doing, but the consensus was it, it really didn't belong in government. Um, we felt like it would be better if it was uh, run by the private sector, the industry itself, for the benefit of the industry and managed by a proven uh, a track record such as the South Dakota Community Foundation. You know, the South Dakota Community Foundation has such a great reputation and a great track record. Mm -hmm. um, we're really modeling what they do for communities across South Dakota, but we're doing it for our number one industry, for agriculture, agriculture. across the state. And the mission behind the foundation. Our, our mission is to invest in the future of South Dakota agriculture through a focus on education, innovation, diversification, and action and opportunities. So um, that's broad, it's very <laughs> general, but intentionally so. We want the foundation to be flexible. Uh, to be able to meet the needs of the times. And we know things are changing rapidly in uh, a lot of industry, but certainly in agriculture today, things are changing rapidly. And so we want to be relevant. We want to be able to adjust with the times and invest and support really important ag endeavors for our state and for the industry. And we'll talk about some of that. The foundation, it's an independent, industry-led, nonprofit, as we've kind of talked about, composed of key leaders uh, in the ag industry across our state. When we talk about those leaders, who are some of those folks? Yeah, well, let me let me uh, share who's on the board of directors, right. for starters. Um, I, I have the pleasure of chairing our board. Um, also joining me, uh, Nathan Jensen. Nathan is also an ag banker, but a leader in the dairy industry. Uh, Nathan is our secretary on the board. James Waltai, who is a certified public accountant in Pierre, South Dakota, is our treasurer. And uh, James and his firm work with lots of ag producers across the state and ag businesses. Bernie Christensen is our vice chair, and uh, Bernie is a familiar name to folks in the world of philanthropy because he was our very first executive director for the South Dakota Community Foundation way back when it was established. Mm -hmm. And so Bernie brings that expertise to the board. Um, in addition, we've got Doug Bervin from Poet Ethanol. Okay. Um, we have Jason Edelman from the Farm Credit Services of America. Greg Von Wald. Greg is the former president of Mitchell Technical University. Okay. Yeah. Also been involved in business himself, has a military background, and is a, a great individual on our board. And then we're about to add Don Norton. Uh, Don is our CEO of the South Dakota Ag and Rural Leadership Program in the state. It's kind of the premier leadership program for the ag industry. Uh, Don will be joining our board in the near future. Um, so that makes up our board. We also have several others that really contributed uh, along the way and are part of an advisory group. Sure. Three of those are past secretaries of agriculture. I mentioned, I mentioned Lucas Lynch. Right. But Bill Even was also okay. very instrumental, oh, as yeah. well as Mike Jaspers. So three of our, our, our uh, recent secretaries of ag have been very involved. There's others as well. Bob Sutton, who's also now the CEO of Avera Health, but Pryor has uh, had experience in the philanthropy world with this community foundation. Jason Mitchell from Valley Queen Cheese. There's just lots of people I could name that uh, were a part of discussions and a part of, hey, this, this needs to happen. Let's work together and make it happen. And I'm certainly leaving some names out. Sure. Here. Well, it sounds like a, a diverse group of ag leaders from all areas of the state. That's correct. Let's talk about the role of the foundation. Part of it, investing in the future of South Dakota ag through financial support, human resources, and capital. So when we look back um, at some of the areas that the foundation has invested in, what are some of those? Well, right now we have two grant 
programs um, that are available for folks in the ag industry to apply for. One is called our Ag Innovators Program. Mm -hmm. um, year to date, and we've only been existent in existence for two years, so we're, we're a very new foundation just getting off the ground. But in our first two years, we're really proud to say we've given out 17 grants through our Ag Innovator Grant Program, totaling $40,000 that we've invested into the industry. Uh, lots of various uh, uh, recipients of those grants, a lot of 4-H. Uh, projects, a lot of FFA activity, a lot of investment to take existing proven programs in agriculture, but lift them up and give them more resources to do even better things. Okay. So, so that is one avenue. We also have a second avenue that's a grant program called Building Rural Communities. And through that grant program, we've given out 25 different grants, totaling about $16,000. Those are generally a little smaller in nature uh, as far as size, but we reach all parts of the state and uh, uh, both are focused on how do we build the rural areas, how do we build our ag industry, and how do we, uh, in these cases, it's very focused on our youth, the next generation of the industry. As we build our endowment and have more resources, we have, uh, we have grand visions of uh, bigger and better things that we can do to invest in and make, make our industry even stronger. And the foundation is really not very old. How, how long has it been in progress? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're correct. We're, we're, we're quite young. The end of 2016 is when we officially received our charter and our status as a 501c3 organization, a nonprofit organization that can accept tax deductible contributions or investments. So we started back then. Uh, two, two companies uh, are noteworthy uh, to kind of get the foundation off the ground. Farm Credit Services of America stepped mm -hmm. up with a $500,000 commitment. And First Dakota National Bank, who I, who I represent, mm -hmm. stepped up with a $500,000 commitment. So, so uh, Farm Credit and First Dakota made the initial gifts to kind of get the foundation started. But since then, we've had uh, uh, several others uh, join uh, from Poet Ethanol to Valley Queen Cheese, um, Legend Seed, Dakota Bank, Bank West, um, Midwest Dairy Association, um, First Interstate Bank, um, and, and, and several others have stepped forward to also contribute and build our funds. So uh, to date, we've, we've, uh, we're approaching five million in total commitments from uh, investors and of course those investments can be made over a period of years sure. and we have uh, probably another five million of potential commitments in process and things uh, being worked on so um, like any uh, endowed fund um, we, d we will not dip into the principle of those contributions so we need to raise that endowment so that the sure. earnings off of that endowment can fund our grant making and, and our investment in the industry. And so it takes time to build that endowment to a point where you have meaningful resources. But we, we are very proud of the progress we've made and we're excited about what the future holds. Speaking of future, investing in the future of SAG, uh, agriculture here in South Dakota, as we've mentioned, that's part of what you do. But when you talk about what that looks like and who you want to invest in, where does that conversation begin? So this, this group of key leaders we talked about earlier um, had a kind of a strategic planning session and a brainstorming session about how do we want to make those decisions as we right. go forward. And what came of that is a focus on four, what I call our key pillars. Um, the first one is human capital and workforce mm -hmm. development. So right. how do we invest in the people side of the industry? The other one is industry development and diversification. So how do we make sure as an ag industry across our state we're diversified and we're not tied to one or two commodities, we, we continue to promote diversification, which, which gives us staying power through the ups and downs of the cycles of agriculture. Um, working lands conservation was a third pillar, and that's all about sustainability and taking care of our natural resources. And then the last one is promotion of and service to agriculture. As we know, um, agriculture over the years has been a shrinking demographic, so there's fewer folks directly uh, connected to producing uh, ag products. And as we're a smaller segment of the population, how we communicate and tell our story, how we interact with consumers becomes more and more important. And so that's uh, what that fourth pillar is really all about. So those are our key guiding pillars, mm -hmm. I, I call them. 
what we will do now is look for opportunities in those four areas to really make a difference. Um, you know, under human capital and workforce development, I, I mentioned Don Norton will be joining our board, the CEO of South Dakota Ag and Rural Leadership. South Dakota Ag and Rural Leadership has made a tremendous impact on agriculture in the state of South Dakota. 300 plus uh, folks that have been through a two-year rigorous leadership training program so that they can be better leaders in our industry and help move our industry forward. They're worth investing in. And, and so we've, we've tried to do some investing and some partnering with South Dakota Ag and Rural Leadership. And having Don join the board is just an example of one of the ways we'll look to invest in human capital. The other one we talked about earlier, and that is the grants that we've been providing to youth, uh, so the next generation of human capital in the industry uh, can capitalize on some of those grants that we've been able to, uh, to offer to date. I'm gonna pick on one of these <clears throat> pillars, and it is the industry diversification. Yeah. Um, we know that in today's um, workforce, or at least the ag industry, as you mentioned, you have to be diversified with your operation. How can the foundation or how has the foundation helped farmers, ranchers, anyone within the industry recognize this and not just recognize it, but then move to that next level? Yeah, well, it's a challenge. It's a challenge in any environment uh, to try something new, to reach out and diversify into new ventures. But I think the environment we're in, where economically it's much tighter than it has been, wow. Weather has thrown us some curveballs. I think that's the environment where folks are the most open to, boy, we probably need to try something new. We need to look at new opportunities that can bring new revenue to our farm, to our ranch. And so as a foundation, we don't want to drive that specifically, but we want to encourage the implementation of new technology, the implementation of new um, diversified opportunities in agriculture. And one of the things we've talked about, and as soon as we have the resources available to make this a meaningful thing, we plan to launch an Ag Innovators competition annually. Much like the governor's big idea campaign that has really taken off uh, for the South Dakota economy in general, we want to do a similar type of thing, but focused on ag and have a competition annually where folks can compete for new ideas and new innovation that can make our ag industry better. And through that, we hope to inspire new ways of diversifying at your farm, new ways of diversifying at your agribusiness. Um, you know, no doubt we, we see agriculture as not just production ag, which is obviously the backbone, uh, farmers and ranchers, but also all of the related business connected to that, which is significant in a state mm -hmm. like South Dakota. We want to inspire more opportunities in all of those areas. Uh, you know, Doug Bourbon being a member of POET and on our board is a great example of uh, agribusiness that's directly connected to ag, our ag industry and the importance it can make to everybody in our, in our, our region. Part of the, one of the pillars has to do with industry promotion, that outreach and how important yeah. that is connecting with South Dakotans across the state. Part of that is going to include innovative communications, development, and quality life initiatives. Have we seen anything that you can think of that's come out of the foundation that maybe those at home will go, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, well, one, here's a specific example, and it connects two of our partners that I've already mentioned. Uh, FFA was looking for leadership training for some of their leaders within the FFA program across the state. Well, we provided a grant to South Dakota Ag and Rural Leadership, a, a proven leadership program in mm -hmm. the state, to use those funds to go out and address enhancing leadership directly with the FFA. And that's happened, and, and they've had two different sessions now where that's taken place. It's a way for us to bring uh, two proven organizations together and enhance each other at the same time, and we can provide some of that funding to help make that happen. That's one example. We've. We've had um, some uh, sessions with students in the, some of the Sioux Falls School District talking about how they view ag and how do they view their food and how, what do they think about when they, when they buy their food, where does it come from, those kind of things. So we've, we've done a few of those kinds of projects. Um, we've supported South Dakota Ag in the Classroom, okay. which has really been innovating their programs in the last few years to be much more relevant and connect with many more students through the use of technology in the South Dakota school system. So those are some examples of how we can help have a conversation about agriculture. What is it? How does it work? 
and what it means to everybody in the state, not just those directly involved in ag industry, but consumers. After all, in agriculture, we all are connected. We all eat every day, and, and so we have to understand uh, what that means. When we talk about supporting continued stewardship of our working lands, the working lands conservation, um, our farmers and ranchers, they are stewards of the land. They're taking care of it uh, everywhere we look. But part of this mission, is it to also encourage the rest of South Dakotans to be stewards of the land, and how do we get them on board with that? Yeah, it's, I think that's part of telling the mission, you know, telling our story, as we just talked about, the communication piece. Um, you know, we, we, it's natural. We're, I'm no different, right? Uh, as a consumer, I buy things every day that I need. Do I put a lot of thought on where it came from and how it was uh, produced? Sometimes, but oftentimes not. And how do we continue to have that conversation in a way so that uh, the consumer appreciates it? You know, things like the Food Network and other um, exposure to food uh, has really enhanced that naturally in our society, and that's a good thing. You know, how do we tell the story about where does your food come from and how, what care do farmers and ranchers put into how it's produced to make sure it's safe, it's healthy, it's wholesome, and it preserves the natural resources uh, that it was grown on. And so I think there's a lot of things we can do in that area. The challenge we'll have as a foundation is where, where can we get the best bang for the dollar and where can we um, have the most impact mm -hmm. for those precious resources that we that we have as we build this endowment. As we look to the future of ag, and you talked about everything from the lands to technology, uh, what, do, what does the future look like for the Ag Foundation and how they can help move that into the future? Yeah, I think it's exciting. You know, there's certainly plenty of challenges out there today, and I, I don't make light of any of that. But I guess I've always believed that with challenge comes opportunity. And oftentimes challenges inspire opportunity. And so I really do feel we're going we're gonna to learn things in this environment that are going to catapult our industry going forward to do great things. And I hope the foundation can be positioned well to help in that, in that endeavor. One of the things that we've talked about very consciously as a foundation is we want to be that organization that brings different segments of agriculture together for a greater good. Uh, helps inspire and promote working together and combining resources so that we're not duplicating efforts. Uh, you know, sometimes in ag we we can get fractured, mm -hmm. and just by the nature of you know we have multiple commodities, we have multiple commodity groups, we have multiple uh, interests depending on what type of operation you are, and some of that is natural, but I think the foundation can really play a role in bringing all of those groups together when possible and combining resources to make the best return on investment possible. And uh, I think we can, you know, it's, it's the old theory that a rising tide raises all ships. And I really think the foundation can be one of the catalysts and the facilitators of that for the ag industry as a whole. And I'm excited about what that can lead to as we go forward. Your final thoughts as we look to the future of agriculture and your involvement as an ag leader, a South Dakotan, and uh, somebody that sits on the board. What are you looking forward to? You know, I, I see the youth in agriculture really embracing the challenges we face today. Uh, number one, they're, they're naturally technologically savvy. They, they've grown up with technology. They don't know any different. And I think they're bringing new ideas to our farms and ranches all the time that are going to make us better. That's exciting to mm -hmm. me. I, you know, I can really get uh, fired up about that. Um, I think this industry uh, is is strong and will continue to be strong. Will there be changes because of the environment? No, no doubt about it. There will be some changes that happen, but I see a, a large number of our producers um, embracing the challenges, making adjustments, and finding the silver lining or the opportunities that exist out there. So I, I really I, I view the future as very bright. And uh, um, you know, the other thing worth mentioning with the foundation is you know the demographics of farmers. We know that you know the average age of farmers is, is getting older, and there is a big transition wow. taking place. Well, as a foundation, we want to help make sure that the assets of our industry stay here in this state for the benefit of the ag industry in this state. So in those cases where there's not errors to inherit the, those assets mm -hmm. and keep them deployed in those family-owned operations, I think the Ag Foundation can be an option 
to, to uh, take some of those assets and keep them here locally and keep them invested in our number one industry to keep it strong for many, many decades to come. And I, I, uh, I look forward to the day when I'm retiring and looking back on some of the good things that happened in our industry. And I, I, think, uh, I think we'll be really proud of what the South Dakota Ag Foundation uh, has accomplished and helped accomplish uh, across the industry. Excellent. Nate Franzine with the South Dakota Ag Foundation, thanks for coming in. My pleasure.